Sally Ride was born in Encino, California on May 26, 1951 to her parents Dale Ride and Joyce Ride. Two years after Sally was born, she had a sister named Karen, but Sally couldn't pronounce the name Karen, so she called her little sister Bear. When Sally was nine, she, her sister, and her parents went on a trip around Europe for a year. Her parents thought her good because when she and her sister came back to school in California, Sally was the smartest in her class. In fact, she skipped a grade because she was so smart. Sally liked school and science, but her favorite was sports activities. She especially liked tennis. And she just wasn't good at tennis. She was great at it. At the age of 12, she was playing in national junior tennis matches all over the country. She was even trained by the famous Alice Marble. But at the same time, she met a girl named Ch Tam O'Shaughnessy. Tam was even better than Sally, and the two were friends for the rest of their lives. At Westlake, she loved two things, playing tennis and studying science. Her main inspiration for science was from her 11th grade science teacher, Dr. Elizabeth Mommertz. The two were close friends, but when Sally was chosen to become an astronaut, she found out that Dr. Mommert had sadly died. It's 1977, and Sally Wright has just decided to apply to NASA. Four years ago, in 1973, Sally graduated with a bachelor's degree in physics and English from Stanford University. And two years later, in 1975, Sally had just gotten her master's degree in physics from Stanford University. But anyway, going back to the future, when Marty McFly and Doc, wait, sorry, wrong topic. But anyway, after she applied in 1977, NASA chose 208 people to interview to work for NASA. In October 1977, Sally was one of them. Then later, in 1978 of January, Sally got the wonderful news that she was picked to be an astronaut for NASA. But before she could even think of going to space, she had to go through years of training. Through the years, Sally and Piers had to go through different challenges such as being ejected off a roller coaster, parachuting, and the worst of all, the dragon drop, where she would be dropped in icy water with the parachute attached to a boat. She would then have to get out of the harnesses off the parachute, and then she would have to swim to a faraway dock. This test took all of Sally's strength to do it, but Sally still did it. And then, five years later, after her training, she married her peer, Steve Hawley. Around this time, Sally had gotten the news that she was chosen to go on a mission in space. Unfortunately, Steve wasn't chosen. But anyway, a year later, on June 18th, 1983, Sally Ride went into space. And when Sally came back from space, people loved her. People wore shirts saying, Ride Sally Ride. People wanted to have interviews with her. She was in magazines and she was just so popular. But Sally hated doing interviews. In fact, she thought of them as insulting. Before her first trip into space, a reporter had asked her if when things went wrong, she would cry. But Sally just laughed even though she didn't think it was funny. And after six months of popularity, she was tired of it. For the next few months, she was just training for her next mission, and her husband Steve had also been chosen for a mission, but not the same one as Sally's. Anyway, let's fast forward again to January 28, 1986. NASA was launching the space shuttle, the Challenger, and this time the mission was special because a high school teacher, Christia McAuliffe, was going to space. She was going to be the first teacher ever to go into space. The launch was going fine. But then, somehow the shuttle's fuel tanks started to leak and the Challenger had gotten caught on fire. Everyone on the Challenger had died, and Sally was very sad. After the Challenger incident, Sally wanted to change her life. In 1978, she divorced her husband Steve Hawley so she could be with her longtime friend, Tam O'Shaughnessy. Remember her? She and Sally used to play tennis together, remember? Sally also retired from NASA in 1978. She then worked as a scientist for Stanford University for two years, and after this, she moved to the University of California, San Diego, where she became the director of the California Space Institute. Sally also wrote a book called To Space and Back, and in 2001, Sally founded the Sally Ride Science for Elementary and Middle School Students.
and in 2003, Sally Ride was inducted into the Aspinall Hall of Fame. And then sadly, in 2012, Sally Ride passed away because of cancer, which she was shocked to find out that she had been battling for a year. And that's the story of Sally Ride. And before I go, I would like to say that I think that Sally Ride showed that if you work hard in your life, you will get rewarded. That's all. Thanks for listening to this video presentation of Sally Ride's life by Mark and Taylor.